Welcome to a lesson on polar coordinates. Uh, in this video, we'll be looking at what the polar coordinate system looks like, uh, how we plot points, um, the fact that there are different ways that we can write those points, uh, and then we'll look at how we can convert those coordinates uh, between rectangular and polar form, and, and we'll look at how we can convert equations as well. Uh, so let's first just start at looking at what the polar coordinate system looks like and comparing it to what we're used to. Uh, the rectangular coordinate system, uh, which is what we all uh, have grown up learning about, uh, that uses x's and y. So every x, every point on the graph can be represented as an x and a y coordinate. Well, those x's and y's represent horizontal and vertical distances. Okay, so we know how far left and right, and how far up and down to go. Uh, so polar, on the other hand, uh, defines uh, a point's location in terms of its distance from the origin and the direction you would travel. Okay, so the distance, uh, you can think of its radius, so I think we're going to talk about here in a second, radiuses of circles, uh, and then the angle, the theta, the direction, uh, is just a standard position angle, so, uh, you know, zero is the x-axis, uh, positive rotation is counterclockwise, and clockwise would be negative rotation. Uh, so instead of using x and y as your coordinate, you would write it as r comma theta. Uh, we can also convert uh, coordinates and equations using uh, a couple equations here. So if we're in the Cartesian coordinate system, and so in other words, we're given x and y, and we're trying to find r and theta, uh, we can use the equation uh, r squared equals x squared plus y squared to find r, uh, and then we can use tangent of theta is equal to y over x in order to find theta. And if we're in the polar coordinate system and we're trying to convert to Cartesian, uh, then we can use uh, these two equations. Uh, so again, if we if we know what r and theta are and we're trying to find x and y, uh, we can use x equals r cosine of theta and y equals r sine of theta. And these should look familiar to you. These are, uh, we've seen these before, uh, for example, like with our vectors. Uh, so let's look at what the uh, coordinate grids actually look like. Uh, so again, we are used to the Cartesian coordinate system. Uh, and just because it's horizontal and vertical distances, when you, this sort of creates this rectangular grid. And again, that's what we're, we're used to. Okay, so we have this rectangular grid representing our horizontal and our vertical distances. With the polar coordinate system, uh, instead we're talking about distance from the origin. So we already talked about this as being a radius of a circle. So we have these concentric circles where each circle, as you go further and uh, larger and larger in radius, is just re uh, representing a larger and larger distance from the origin. So the, the very first smallest circle here uh, is radius 1, so that's our unit circle, and then we have a radius 2 and a radius 3 and a radius 4, and we can keep moving outwards. So we get larger and larger circles. Uh, and then all the diagonal lines, uh, which kind of look like the spokes of a wheel, uh, they just represent the direction, so they're kind of our, our um, uh, unit circle angles. Uh, with this particular grid, uh, each line represents a rotation of pi over 12. Uh, so in the first quadrant, uh, the first one is pi over 12, then the second one would be pi over 6, the middle one is pi over 4, and then the fourth one is pi over 3, and then again we can keep going all the way around. Uh, so let's uh, try a couple examples of plotting coordinates. Um, so this first one is 3 comma pi over 4. Uh, and again, the 3 is r, that's your distance from the origin, that's your radius. And then the pi over 4 is the direction. So this to plot this point, I want to go a distance of 3 units from the origin in the direction of pi over 4. So that means I want to be on the third circle, and I want to go in the pi over 4 direction. So that point would be right here. Okay, and again, so that's a point on the third circle, the circle with radius 3, and it's in the direction of pi over 4. The second one's a little trickier. Uh, it's a negative 5 comma pi over 6. So that means we want to be on the fifth circle, the circle of radius 5, but we want to go in the opposite direction of pi over 6. So pi over 6 is in the first quadrant. So opposite first quadrant is in the third quadrant, so that would actually be on the 7 pi over 6 angle line. So point B here, it's on the rate, circle of radius 5, but it's in the opposite direction of pi over 6. 
Uh, why don't you take a, a few minutes, uh, pause, pause the lesson here, take a few minutes and work through the exercises on page 37 in your lab manual. And then come back once you're done. All right, so let's look at uh, how we can express points in multiple ways. Um, so this first one is the point we're given is 4 comma negative pi over 2. And we want to know which of the following six points, which of the following six coordinates all correspond to the same point on the graph. So let's just quickly first think about what this, uh, the given point 4 comma negative pi over 2, what does that represent? So that means we have a point that is 4 units away, so it's on the circle of radius 4, and it's in a direction of a negative pi over 2 rotation. So negative pi over 2 rotation means we're going to rotate clockwise 90 degrees, so it's going to be on the negative y-axis, so 4 units down on the negative y-axis. Okay, So take a few minutes, uh, pause the video, and then see if you can figure out which of the following six coordinates also represent the same point. Uh, and then when you think you got it figured out, um, you can come back and resume the video. Okay, so we should end up with four uh, of these coordinates all being the same thing. So C, D, E, and F all represent the same point. So just quickly looking through this, again, <clears throat> we know that the, the first, the given point uh, is four units down the negative y-axis. Um, for part A, we are rotating in the counterclockwise direction because it's a positive angle. So that's going to rotate just a little, uh, it's going to rotate 90 degrees past one complete rotation of the circle, which puts us on the positive y-axis. For part B, we are also rotating in the negative uh, clockwise direction, so we rotate down to the negative y-axis. But because of the negative 4 radius, we're then going to flip across the origin, so it's actually going to put it up on the positive uh, y-axis. So actually, point A and B um, give us the same location on the grid. Uh, and then you can kind of look through uh, the other four uh, we, and see we're rotating clockwise uh, 3 pi over 2, but then flipping across the origin. On part D, we're rotating almost twice around the circle to end up at the y, negative y-axis. Uh, for part E, we're rotating clockwise again, uh, not quite a, a little over a full loop. Uh, and then uh, for part F, we're only rotating 90 degrees in a counterclockwise direction, but then we're flipping across the origin. So all four of these, so C, D, E, and F, would all correspond to the same point. So these are four different ways, so actually five different ways that we could represent the same point. All right, so how do we convert uh, coordinates <clears throat> that are in polar form into a Cartesian coordinate? So if we're given the, the point 5, comma, 5 pi over 6, remember this is radius 5, angle 5 pi over 6. Well, we just have to plug those into our equations, x equals 5 cosine of theta and y equals 5 sine of theta. So if we do that, we simplify things out, well, we're going to get that 5, comma, 5 pi over 6 can be rewritten in rectangular form as a negative 5 root 3 over 2, comma, 5 over 2. Let's look at the reverse. If we're given a point in Cartesian coordinates, how do we re represent it in polar? And this is a little trickier. Uh, first, because there's infinitely many ways that we could express any angle, right? We could loop around the circle forever in either direction. So let, to simplify things, let's keep theta between 0 and 2 pi. That still allows for two possible answers, one if the radius is positive and one if the radius is negative. So for an example, we have 3 root 3 comma 3. So x is 3 root 3 and y is 3. Uh, so to, to find r, <clears throat> again we're going to use x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So if we plug in our x and our y, we simplify it down, we get 36 equals r squared. We take the square root of both sides, which remember when that happens you get plus or minus. So we get r equals plus or minus 6. So there's our two possible radius values. Uh, to find theta, we're going to use tangent of theta is equal to y over x. Uh, which to do that, again, we're just plugging in our y and our x's. We simplify it down to 1 over root 3. And then tangent of theta uh, means e equaling 1 over root 3 would give us theta is pi over 6 and a 7 pi over 6. 
So we have two radius values and we have two angle values and we have to know which goes with which. Does the positive 6 go with the pi over 6 or the 7 pi over 6? Does the negative 6 go with which angle? Okay, so to figure that out, um, look at where the original point was located. So the point 3 root 3 comma 3 is in the first quadrant. Well, pi over 6 is in the first quadrant, so we want the positive radius. 7 pi over 6 is in the opposite quadrant. It's in quadrant 3. So we need the negative radius because the negative radius says you're going to go to the 7 pi over 6 direction and then do about 180 and turn and go in the first quadrant. Okay, so 6 pi over 6, 6 comma pi over 6, and then the negative 6 comma 7 pi over 6 uh, would be the two polar coordinates uh, that would match uh, the, the given rectangular coordinate. I want you to take a few minutes, pause this video, and see if you can do numbers 7 through 14 on page 38. <clears throat> Alright, so let's look at just uh, sketching graphs real quick and converting equations. So, R equals 8. Uh, that's just all the points that are 8 units away from the origin. That would just define a circle. Uh, so we get X squared equals Y squared equals 64. Um, theta equals 5 pi over 6, that's just all the points on that particular angle, uh, the angle of 5 pi over 6, that's going to represent a line. And to figure out what the actual equation for that line is, just use, we know what theta is, so use our tangent equation and solve it for y. For this, the last two, r equals 2 cosecant of theta and r equals 2 secant of theta, uh, those are just going to be a horizontal and a vertical line, respectively. Uh, we can rewrite r equals 2 cosecant of theta as y equals 2, and r equals 2 secant of theta as x equals 2. All right, what about converting equations from rectangular to polar? So if we have 4x plus 7y is equal to 2, uh, we can go ahead and replace the x and the y with the r cosine of theta and the r sine of theta. We can then factor out the r and then divide both sides by what's left in the parentheses. And so that gives us r equals 2 over 4 cosine of theta plus 7 sine of theta. And then for the second one, x squared plus y squared minus 2y is equal to 0. Uh, remember, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, and y is r sine of theta. Uh, if we um, move things over and divide both sides by r, we get r equals 2 sine of theta. Now let's try going in the reverse. What if we're given polar equations and we want to convert them into rectangular? Uh, so if we have r equals 4 cosine of theta, we're going to take in multiple... In order to do anything with that cosine, it needs to be r cosine, because I know r cosine is x. So we're going to multiply both sides by r, and that gives me r squared equals 4r cosine. Uh, I know r squared is x squared plus y squared, and I know r cosine theta is x. So I get x squared plus y squared is equal to 4x. Uh, for b, we have x, r squared is equal to sine of 2 theta. Uh, to do any conversion here, we're going to have to use our double angle identity, which lets us convert sine of 2 theta into 2 sine theta cosine theta. Uh, well, to do anything, to convert the sine and the cosine, I need to each have an r with them. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by an r squared. So on the left side, you're going to have r squared, squared basically. On the right side, I'm going to split the r's apart. So we're going to have 2 r sine theta and r cosine of theta, which becomes 2 y x on the right side. And on the left side, if you have r squared, that's x squared plus y squared. So you get x squared plus y squared squared, quantity squared, equals, uh, equals 2xy. And then for the last one, um, we're gonna, we have r equals 6 over 2 cosine of theta minus 3 sine of theta. Multiply both sides by the denominator. And then distribute the r. So, and then we know our cosine of theta is an x, and our sine of theta is a y. And so this turns out to be a linear equation. Uh, go ahead and uh, see if you can finish page 38. Uh, so that's exercises 15 through 36.